In 2025, God takes 90 million people to heaven, chaos reigns in the world, and a new charismatic leader of the United Nations begins to gain popularity. The question is, who is he, the new Jesus or the Antichrist? For a long time, everyone said that disappearances happened suddenly, but there were plenty of warnings. Although politicians at the highest level categorically deny God's involvement in the disappearances, and others refuse to remember what was written in the Bible, there are various versions from aliens to natural phenomena. During this time, Jonathan Stonigo decides to buy the largest information system, Eden, and build a temple for a new religion. Despite the fact that people stop believing in the government, crime rates increase and the number of suicides rise. One of those who lost their family is pilot Rayford Steele. His wife Irene had been trying to lead her husband to God for years and even brought him to services at the Church of the New Times. But her husband, though not arguing, was in no hurry to become a follower. Everything changed when part of the passengers disappeared from his plane in the middle of a flight at an altitude of 9 kilometers. He immediately understood what had happened thanks to Irene's warnings. Now Ray missed his wife and son who also disappeared and wanted to believe in the rapture. One day journalist Buck hosts another program about disappearances. In recent times the world has faced an increase in a percentage of serious crimes and experts predict a worsening. His guest is a doctor who investigates the pandemic of evil but cannot answer Buck's questions, but assures him that the second wave of disappearances will soon pass. Buck is stunned by the statement and the doctor's words that this forecast was made by computers. He wants to know where the data on which the conclusions were based came from who exactly obtained them and where, but at that moment the broadcast suddenly cuts off. At that moment Ray confesses to his daughter Chloe that he agreed to a couple of flights, it's time to get back to life. Meanwhile the outraged journalist tries to find out who exactly cut off his broadcast and goes to the boss's office. On the way he is stopped by the operator of his studio who apologizes saying that he couldn't argue with the bosses. The angry journalist reminds the leader that many have lost loved ones and people need an understanding of what happened, not constant footage of suicides. At that moment the secretary announces the release of an article stating that Nicole Carpathia, a former ambassador of Romania, is being considered for the new secretary general of the United Nations. But the boss threatens to cancel Buck's show if he doesn't listen to his opinion. Buck leaves in anger. Meanwhile, Buck watches a speech by an official who calls on all governments of the world to unite and create a single world state, and then calls his friend, Dirk. Dirk suggests meeting to discuss the matter in person. During their meeting, Dirk tells Buck about one of the analytical firms that has taken over the market and is passing unverified data to the United Nations. In other words, they can say whatever they want, backing it up with fake survey reports, but in reality they don't have actual data on the number and names of the missing people. This means that they are creating this crisis themselves. After this, Dirk demonstrates a clear diagram that shows that only a few corporations control the world. 15 TV channels, 120 radio stations, 300 newspapers, and even pharmaceutical companies. And among them is the name of Buck's boss. The journalist objects, saying that a family of well-known businessmen runs the TV station. Then Dirk asks, has anyone seen this family? Stonegal owns the companies and has been promoting the idea of a global reset for years. During the disappearance, Buck was on a plane where he met an amazing girl and he shows his photo with Chloe. Meanwhile, Chloe wonders if things could have been different if your mother had never read the Bible. She goes to meet Buck who tells her about Dirk's discovery and confesses that he doesn't want to be involved. He is bothered by people's trust because he thought he was telling the truth but it turns out that he's just being manipulated. At that moment everyone's phones receive a message about the beginning of the second wave of disappearances and Buck rushes to the studio where he tries to find at least one witness who has seen someone disappear during the show again. His guests refer to various sources but there is still no exact confirmation. And then Buck puts forward his theory, it's the new technology. Not long ago people would open their mouths in awe while watching gadgets in the hands of the heroes in Star Wars but now everyone has one in their pocket. High-end technology is like magic. At this time news comes of a UN conference where Stonego calls for a united effort against a new threat because the Great World Reset has begun. Many countries will go bankrupt and some will live in poverty. Therefore, the United Nations approves the introduction of a unified payment system, Eden, invented by scientist Rosenzweig, which he freely gives to the use of a unified government. 
Buck goes live and begins to ask questions, to which Stonegal admits that the first thing that needs to be done is to establish peace in the Middle East. Later, Buck talks to his boss, pointing out that the doctor is collaborating with those who call for the unified government, promising worldwide prosperity, but also scaring people with catastrophes. But Buck still hasn't found anyone who can confirm the reality of the disappearance of people. 90% of the data came from Stonegal's firm, so they benefit from intimidation, after which they declare the takeover of the World Bank. The boss forbids Buck from sharing his conclusions with the viewers. Meanwhile, Ray finds a Bible in Irene's phone, but strangely, the search engine does not display any chapters mentioning ascension or disappearance. The church's account is blocked, and the pastor's number is not in the contacts. The man goes to the church building and discovers locked doors and broken windows. Armed with a golf club, Ray enters the church from the back and finds the pastor. At this time, Chloe is attacked by a hooligan. She manages to fend off her purse, but her hand is injured. While gathering her things, Chloe finds a church pamphlet where Ray is currently helping the pastor who was attacked by hooligans. The pastor believes that the disappearance is the rapture and Ray's wife and son are okay. The pastor asks to be left behind to finish his work. Chloe asks for help from a friend who is a doctor and the woman takes it to the office where she treats the cut. Then she introduces her to her patient who is preparing to pass away. Meanwhile, Ray tries to scientifically explain the phenomenon of the rapture. The pastor points out his mistake. The Bible speaks of a seven-year period of the world between Israel and its enemies. And on that day, the name of the Antichrist will be revealed, the false Christ who will come to deceive humanity. The pastor admits that he said all of this but never fully believed it. So he is a false teacher, which is also predicted by the Bible. But now they both believe in what happened. In the meantime, the doctor and her patient try to convince Chloe to believe in the reality of what is happening, as her mother believed with all her heart. But Chloe wonders why, if they believed in everything, they were left behind and not raptured. Ray continues to listen to the sermon in which the priest reminds of Paul's message to the Corinthians where he warned of the ascension. And he begs to give up selfishness as it is not too late to believe in the Bible and the Lord. The pastor joins the man who is perhaps praying consciously for the first time. Meanwhile, Dirk is attempting to hack into the main server of Eden. However, there is no password and he is unsuccessful thus far. Suddenly, he receives a message on his phone from an unknown person who is aware of his attempts and sends him the password. Dirk gains access to the system. At the same time, Ray's former colleague visits him, hoping to continue their recently started romance. She has left the company and will be working for the United Nations and is willing to put in a good word for Ray. However, he declines the offer and apologizes for his behavior. He is certain of his salvation and has accepted Jesus. The woman leaves, unwilling to listen to his words about God. Dirk informs Buck about what happened. Meanwhile, news reports are airing about the arrival of Nikolai Karpathia at the United Nations, greeted by enthusiastic crowds. Buck visits Dirk, who shows him strange lines of code in Eden. It appears to be more than just a financial system and includes biometrics, surveillance, and social ratings. Whoever controls the system will control the entire world, even down to food purchases. The person who sent the password is willing to provide all the data to Buck so he can expose it. Dirk suggests meeting with the person. In case of his arrest, if it is a setup by the FBI, Buck can show the evidence to the public. Later, the journalist confesses to his assistant that he has found evidence and will soon show it on TV. Unaware that one of his colleagues is taking pictures of his materials and then calling an analytical company. Afterwards, the boss calls in Buck and announces his dismissal. Meanwhile, Ray is trying to persuade Chloe to come to church, but she refuses. A sick woman who overheard their conversation demands to be taken to the pastor. Ray finds boxes with flyers in the church that explain everything. At this moment, women accompanied by Chloe enter the door, who is ready to listen to the priest's answers. Meanwhile, Dirk draws Buck's attention to a line that indicates three dates. The day of disappearance, yesterday declared as the beginning of the second wave, and three days from now. But the code itself was written long before the disappearances began. It turns out that the creator of Eden knew everything before the disappearances began. Buck tries again to find someone whose loved ones disappeared in the second wave. He asks Dirk to enter three names into the system. It turns out that such people do not exist and all of this is fake. The men go to meet the person who sent them the password. Buck helps the operator load the equipment while Dirk gets into the car and notices a ticking bomb in the salon. He manages to warn his friends, then the car explodes and Dirk dies. Meanwhile, Chloe asks why those who did not believe in God disappeared. The pastor explains that Jesus warned his followers about this too. 
One must believe only in the true Lord, and pray to find a way and protect oneself from disasters, because by the end most people will die. The pastor shows verses in the Bible that speak of the ascension, and Chloe suddenly leaves. Meanwhile Stonegal and the project author ask Nicole to support the Eden Project, but he is sure that everything is going well even without his support and it is Stonegal's merit. The pastor continues his reasoning and reminds that the judgment day will happen in the middle of the seven-year period, when the Antichrist will proclaim himself as God, and the whole world will believe him. At this time Chloe goes to the cemetery while Buck goes to Dirk's secret room to get his laptop, but the feds notice him and give chase. Buck is forced to hide in a garbage bin. One of the agents, angry that he let the journalist get away, shoots at the bin, hitting the laptop. Meanwhile, Stonegal informs Nicole that he has chosen him as his successor. Buck's operator calls him and informs him that the studio is being raided by the feds, and his assistant is allegedly found drowned in the bathtub. The operator assures him that everything that is happening now was described in the Bible. Meanwhile, a doctor asks Ray questions. Her husband and his wife were true believers, so why didn't he believe? The man blames himself for being inattentive and foolish. But Irene fulfilled her task. He finally heeded her words. The doctor admits her own disbelief, and Ray comforts her by saying that unwavering belief is knowledge. True faith is when you go to Christ even with doubts. And it's not necessary to go to the Lord, just open the door to which he's knocking right now. At that time Buck finds Chloe at her mother's already dug up grave. The pair opens the coffin, finding only her dress. Chloe has received undeniable proof of the rapture. A few parishioners come to the church, and the pastor calls for them to stand with him. But Buck refuses to believe, while Chloe stands beside her father. The journalist calls Rosenspike and tells him everything he learned about Stonego, who used his Eden for his own purposes. The scientist goes goes to Nicole and asks him to bring Buck to him. But first, Ray asks the guy to look at his conclusions based on studying the Bible. Buck mocks his assumptions but suddenly notices one phrase, it's the password for Eden, and starts studying the scheme created by Ray. It turns out that to build the temple, peace for Israel must be achieved, and this would be unrealistic if Stonego did not take it on. So, is he the Antichrist, or maybe it's Nicole? Buck does not believe it. He saw what was in Eden and understands that its owner will gain power over the whole world. Buck leaves, receiving a crucifix from Chloe as a goodbye. The next morning he meets with Rosenzweig, who tells him that he has long dreamed of building a temple on the Temple Mount, and therefore was so happy about Stonegal's proposal. Buck hears about the period of the First Peace Treaty, seven years, and it alarms him. So, is it all real? He didn't want to believe it, but he was wrong. The man apologizes to the Lord and asks to guide him on the right path. He calls the operator, admits he was right, and asks for his help. The men go to the UN, where Buck tells everything he learned about Stonego. This plan is not just about taking all the money in the world, but also about plunging the planet into a technocratic chaos. Hearing this, Nicole admits that if Buck starts to think about it, he will be forced to ask who was really inside the system. And he is ready to tell what will happen next. And then time seems to freeze, and something supernatural happens. Nicole takes a gun and shoots Stonego and the guard. The others watch the execution calmly and Nicole declares that he is forced to take the reins of power for himself. Only after that do the people seem to come to life and pretend to be shaken by the tragedy. Buck asks questions but everyone gives the same answer, how could anyone attack Nicole? The journalist asks for help from his cameraman and he gets in the car and starts broadcasting from a completely different location, with Buck reporting. Nicole starts his press conference but suddenly the screen turns on and Buck starts telling the real story, refuting the UN Secretary General's words about unexpected disappearances and the fact that the rapture is a lie. They start looking for Buck but they only find his phone after he has already shown the world the politician's lies. The journalist manages to escape and arrive at the airport where Ray, Chloe and the pastor board a plane and take off over the city. The pastor observes their newfound faith, not reminding them that the second coming will only occur in seven years, and those years will be the worst in human history, and those who do not want to believe and stay behind will see what will happen. The plane flies over the city, and numerous brochures of the New Times Church fly out of it, which people pick up and read. And that's how the movie ends. Thank you for your time. Write in the comments what you think of this film.